Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Shauna Kay's Motivational Breeze. And today I have with me no other than Vanessa Chisakula, all the way from Zambia. She is a poet, a filmmaker, a radio personality, a math and computer science teacher, and also a women's rights champion. And today we're talking about women empowerment. How do we continue to empower each other as women? But before we do so, I'm going to give her the opportunity to welcome herself and actually tell us a little bit more about Vanessa. Thank you so much, Shona. Um, I'm so glad that we're doing this today. Uh, even amid, in, in the middle of this crisis that is going on that has taken the world by storm, I'm glad that we can still turn to creativity yeah. in times of, um, of a crisis. And also the most exciting part is that this is a woman to woman talk. Yeah. Um, most of the times these issues have been tabled by the other gender, mm -hmm. not knowing exactly what we're going through, because I've been I've been trying to there's a there's a male friend of mine I've been trying to ask certain questions like what do you think about this in terms of women and the only answer I always get is that I'm not a woman. So the exciting part is that this is happening woman to woman. I'm super excited, and you have said a lot about me already. So I am simply what you see is what you get. This is me, my artistic self is mostly what I have to offer because I do not only practice art, I, I live it. Yeah. Thank you so much. I first saw you in your video that went viral a year ago and I was very amused when I saw it, um, especially when you said that you're not afraid of lions, you're not afraid of tigers, you're not afraid of men who kill, you're not afraid of men with bombs and guns. What does that signify? Like what enabled you to create such a wonderful point that is so deep? Um, so most of my material is based on life in general. Okay. Some experiences are mine, some are not mine. So I really value meeting new people because I always get to learn something. And also I get, I, I usually try to empathize with people. So that is one, one, one tactic that I've been using in creating my art. When I empathize, I try to feel what you're feeling. It makes it easy for me to sit down and be you in the moment I'm creating. So for that piece, it was, there's a bit of personal experience because yeah, we've all been disappointed by people, yes, we not only women, but it's, it's really about humans disappointing humans. So when I put it down to to, to poetically bring the issue out, it was, at the moment, it was relevant for me to just bring in the woman as a subject. So it was nothing personal. It was just like, okay, let's table this issue where people backstab people, where people betray people. But in focus, we're going to put a woman. All the metaphors are going to be related to a woman and what what a woman can do when they are they're, they're the, they're the topic of discussion in terms of them being the person who's betraying another woman. So a lot was running through my mind. My experiences coupled with other people's experiences and then put them together and came up with that piece. I'm glad you liked it. Yes, I did. I listened to it several times and also shared it with my friends as well. And I mean, all so much. I'm getting that this is so deep. And for those who have not yet heard, can you recite it in the next two minutes for us? Ah, okay. So I'm not scared of lions, tigers, or bears. I'm not scared of snakes, alligators, or crocs. I'm not scared of men who carry bombs, guns, or knives. I'm not scared of the men who beat, rape, or kill. But I'm scared of the devil in her silk, burgundy, blonde, or brunette hair, the one with the clean, properly done manicure ready to dig into my business. 
her. The one who thinks it's okay to bite or stab me for a seat at the men's table. The one who thinks it's okay to call my man bestie, boo or sugar, knowing very well that it's a recipe for adding salt to my plate. You see, all this maternal gin shit is a story way past its prime because the devil is female and she just does not care. Currently living on earth and hell, she vacations there. You see, a woman's greatest enemy is a woman. It is that image I see in the mirror every time when I wake up and I am scared of her. Wow. Okay. Wow. Positive message. A lot of betrayal there. A lot of betrayal and disappointment. Whoa. Yes. And for <laughs> ladies, many of us as women, we're actually going through that, even now in this 21st century. Vanessa, when you close your eyes and imagine an empowered woman, what do you see? When I close my eyes, imagine an empowered woman, I see a knowledgeable woman with what is going on around us in the current day, uh, a confident woman, yes. autonomous and also purpose driven. That is one of the key because if you are purpose driven, then you know why you're waking up the next day to do what you're doing mm -hmm. and nobody can easily break you yes. or stop you. And I see a woman who's awake to the need um, to improve their political, social, their economic status and keep it healthy and know that they're a woman, they can bring to the table what they can bring to the table. So an empowered woman is a woman of purpose, a woman who believes woman. in herself. Exactly. Precisely. In light of the vigorous support that you have been given towards empowerment, how much support have you received from both men and women? Um, when it comes to men, um, the support has been there. Sometimes it has not been there because they're the ones with the most questions. So they're just like, okay, so why are you doing this? So why do you think this is necessary? But with, with the men who understand why you're pushing certain agendas, they've been very, very supportive. And there's a certain way men do certain things, which is different from us. So they've been also a source of inspiration and encouragement in a certain way. Yeah. And when it comes to the women, I cannot complain too, because... 80% of people who actually have my back most of the times are women. The, the people say, no, you can do this. Thank you for doing this. So we love you because you do this. And then with the younger ones, it will always be like, okay, we're supporting you because we see ourselves in you or want to be like you. So the support has been tremendous from both sides. It comes from both sides. I think the most important thing is also understanding. Because if you have a group of people who understand what you're doing, yes. what you're aiming for, it's easy for them to, to just come, to be behind you, to stand behind you. So the men, there have been men who've been there like throughout this journey. And there have also been women who've been there throughout this journey. I cannot complain that the support has been awesome. I'm happy to hear that. Now, Vanessa, <laughs> in the real world, do us as women, are we really supporting and empowering other women? And how can we make this better? Okay, so I want to answer that question in two parts. Yes. The first one, like in the real world, are we really doing this? I want to say yes and no. Mm -hmm. The yes part is that we are we're in a time where most, most women have realized that we are not, we are not, it's not necessary to be each other's enemies and we can be sisters keepers. So the yes part, yes, we are doing it. Yeah. There are women who are rallying for other women. There are, there are women who are pushing for other women, helping other women. And then there is a no part. That is why when you ask me about what I 
feel or or what I see when I close my eyes, when I look or imagine an empowered woman, I say they must be knowledgeable. Yes. They must be purpose driven. And for you to have these things, you are almost or you are actually at the point of self actualization. Mm -hmm. And when you know who you are, you cannot it is not easy for you to wake up and bring someone down. No. So these are the people, the people who are knowledgeable enough to know who they are, who have their purpose in check. They're on the, they're on the yes part. They're there helping others get to where they are because they know that there's enough room for other women at the table or at the top. Then the ones on the no side where we are not actually empowering each other in reality, they just, they need a little bit more of a push to realize that mm -hmm. there's enough room for everybody to be who they are yes. and room for others to also come in and sit with them at the same table. So it's mostly about how much knowledge do they have of what is going on around them mm -hmm. and how much of themselves has been actualized. They know who they are. Do they know what their purpose is, what they're living for and what they're doing? Yes. then it'll be easy for you to just to just pass on a rope to the next person, to pass on a button to the next person and, and then go on about business happily, the more the merrier. So I said I'm answering this question in two parts. The first one is I say yes or no, if we're doing it in reality. And then you asked me about how we can make it better, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. We have to come to a realization that um, – Empowerment, women empowerment is very necessary for sustainability yes. in the world. Like uh, sustainability for all of us as humans because we're codependent. Mm -hmm. So when we realize that lifting the person who's next to me is beneficial both to me and the person, it is going to be easy for me to help or to lift up a person. And it doesn't have to be... Um, I don't have to do the, the, the biggest things that are going to break world records. It can start very small. Like, you know, if I reach out to you, Shauna, and I just write you a simple text and say, how are you doing? I care about you. I hope you're okay. It's an upliftment. Yeah. It has done something to you. Yeah. And also, it, sometimes it might be in terms of resources. I can donate money. I can donate essential needs to other girls and women who I know that are struggling in that area. That would be a lot of help. You don't know what you've done for them. Mm -hmm. You can mentor girls around you. There, there's always somebody in need of, uh, of a word of advice of something they're struggling with that you might have succeeded with, exactly. especially if you're older. Mm -hmm. you, you know, there's helping a sister out, there's helping a new mom, there's helping a grandma somewhere. Those tiny, tiny things, you have done something, you have enlightened someone, and you have helped them move on to the next level. You can use your voice. I, for one, I, I always go back to my art. I use my art to speak out on certain issues. I might not be the person who's giving you a hand right there and then, but turn back to a certain message that I, I once preached, and you'd be like, okay, maybe I can try out A and B, and I would have helped. So it doesn't have to be the, the big, big world breaking records, uh, breaking record uh, actions. Sometimes they're just small, very, very small. A phone call away, it's, it's a visit away, and it works for the other person. I, I'm sorry about that. It's okay. I do agree with you. Thank you so much for answering that question. Currently in Zambia, what are some of the things that you're doing to support women? We know that you do this through your art, the way how you express. And I, I realized as I watched that video that went viral, I saw the audience. Everyone were so focused, so attentive to the message that you were saying. It's as if you had food and you were issuing out food to hungry people. Okay, so I am a co-founder and creator of a social movement we call, we call Word Smash. And what you saw in that video was one of our monthly sessions where we have these poetry shows and we strategically theme them in a way where they spark conversation. Our themes are aimed towards talking about things or asking questions that others are afraid to ask or tabling topics that others are afraid to put on the table. So 
those were one of the sessions. And then to answer your question, that is one of the things that I've been investing most of my time in. Um, so through the social movement, we realize that we can be um, of great help if we can pass opportunity net targeting young girls and women and, 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 and um, reminding them that the art that exists in them can be, is needed somewhere. Yes. There is this platform that needs you so you can come through, you can speak out. That is, that is what has taken up um, most of my time. And then there's some girls who've managed to like sit me down or rather to find where I'm found. And so I have been investing some of my time in one-on-one -on -one mentorships. Like I help out girls who need direction or guidance artistically, sometimes just with their personal lives. And so I, I, I'm contributing in that way. And also what tops it all up is using my voice because I'll speak against anything that has to do with discrimination against women and their rights. And so, yeah, that is, that is mostly my contribution in Zambia in the world at large. Awesome. And what suggestion would you give to women who are on the path of empowerment? There are many, there are many women who are out there in society. They don't know their worth. They're not living their worth. What advice would you give to these women? So for the women that are out there and they are struggling um, with the whole concept of empowerment or are on the path to empowerment, the, one of the most important things is to understand what this is because it'll be easier to embrace the entire concept when you understand what you're dealing with and what it is. So. We should, we as women should realize that getting empowered, empowering ourselves, empowering others is a way of life. It's not something I wake up to today and I don't want to do tomorrow. We're building blocks. And for us to get to a time when we can have women who are confident enough or purpose driven, who are knowledgeable enough about life situations, we're building bit by bit. We're making people realize who they are every day. And you know, we are humans, change is dynamic, new things are being thrown in every day. So we have to consistently want to do this daily. We have to consistently want to empower ourselves and, and empower others and also allow others to empower us. Because one problem I have noticed with us women is that we ask for things we can rarely handle sometimes. So we'll be like, okay, we're fighting for this or fighting for equality. We want women to be empowered. But once these opportunities are thrown at us, how open are we? So if you are in on that path where you want to be empowered or you're getting empowered or you want to empower someone, be open to the opportunities that are throwing themselves at you for you to realize your empowerment. Uh, quicker than you can if you're not open to, to, to opportunities. And be kind. And always remember to, 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 to tag someone along. Like, we cannot achieve this alone. So tag someone along. Help somebody. I agree with you. Can you share with us a little about your own personal path of empowerment? Okay, so... I firstly came to realize that there is more to life than just the ordinary waking up and then going back to bed. And then I started to, to look within myself, to look outside myself, and I said, okay, what can be put where? And, and mostly it came from situations where you would notice some people treating you lesser Yes. than they're supposed to treat you mm -hmm. or giving you lesser than they're supposed to give to you. And most of the times it would be as a result of you being a woman. Yeah. So I was like, okay, if I can feel this, there's obviously somebody else feeling this. Mm -hmm. That is when I turned to my art and I started to express myself before I even had a big platform. I would, I would, I would sit at home in my room, think about things. I'd be like, okay, how can I, get this tabled on a bigger platform for people to hear these messages, for people to realize that this is not the world of life, or for people to realize that mm -hmm. they can do better towards other people. 
And so mostly my journey has been about just learning about who I am yeah. and trying to work on tiny, tiny things and trying to, to, to turn them into beneficial things, not only for myself, but for others as well. And I've been so lucky throughout that I am surrounded by really good people. People are willing to sacrifice their time, their resources to teach me certain things and to also give me space to express myself through certain things because I could not have been where I am, know what I know, or even get the empowerment that I might have been empowered, that I am empowered with today if it was not for certain people who surrounded me, both professionally and even in my family because I'm surrounded by very beautiful and strong women, my mother, my grandma, my aunties. I have seen them, I have grown up watching them effortlessly uh, show me the way effortlessly lead me into um, a path that is really something to be proud of. And so I get empowered even by other people's experiences, not only mine. And so for me, my journey, my journey has really about people. I really capitalize on humans. Like I just go like, what can I learn? What can I learn? Or what, what can I give to you? And so at the end of the day, it has been, the burden has really been eased because of people who surround me. And yeah, also my personal experiences. That's wonderful. That draws me to the, to the next thing. You just spoke about your grandma, your aunts, and just people being there for you. It is really important for us as women, if we want to live an empowered life, and if we want to continue to empower other women, I do believe, and I know that you will support this as well, it is very important to have mentors along exactly. the Exactly. Yes. And mm -hmm. how important would you say having a mentor is to shape to actually shape one character, shape the way how we do things and also how we believe in ourselves as women? Um, so I will go back to something I said earlier. We are codependent yes. as humans. It is impossible to achieve things on our own, like entirely. Yes. We, there is, you know, there's a proverb which says, if you want to go far, you can go alone. But if you want to go further, you go with someone. So um, mentorship is very, very important because there, there are certain parts in life or certain situations in life that will get you really stuck. Mm -hmm. Your mentor might actually be the one who is supposed to help you go on to the next level. And then... There is very little to learn from ourselves, but there's so much to learn from others. That is why it's important when we meet people, we learn as much as we can before we open our mouths to teach them what we know. Yeah. We spend most of the time with ourselves. We've spoken to, we know ourselves, we've spoken to ourselves. We know, I know, I know when I'm getting angry, I know when I'm happy, mm -hmm. so why not? when I meet a person, why not take that time to actually soak in what it is that they can teach me? That's where a mentor comes in. A mentor comes in to shape, to build, to help, to, to go the extra mile when you cannot. Somebody told me, it, I'm, I'm here to, 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 to make you do 10 push-ups when your mind has told you to do five. So a mentor is just there to, to push, push you slightly further than you can on your own. Yes, you, you can do things on your own, but you, you can do miracles when it's you and somebody who is passionate about helping you get somewhere. So mentors, it's a really, really, really uh, helpful trend that young people should invest in. We really need guidance from people who've been there, from people who know more, from people who know how to navigate certain places that we have not yet reached. So mentorship is very important, I, especially for us, the young women. I do agree, Vanessa. You know, in light, of this, in light of this pandemic that the world is facing at this time, and in many countries, we're under lockdown, we're all inside, but women who are depressed, women who feel unappreciated, women who are devalued, this pandemic have not eliminated those feelings. And even though they are locked away 
world, but they're still living with these scars. They're still living with these stains, even during this time. What vision or hope can you give to these women on, on planet? What is your vision for these women? Um, okay. Firstly, in relation to the pandemic, I, um, it really saddens me because firstly, the depression part, thank God you mentioned it. Yes. Really, um, it's a big thing, but nobody's really focusing on it. Yes. There are people who are going through certain phases in life where instead of social distancing, they actually need to be out there with certain people for them to, to do the next day. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's become so hard, but we're not focusing on that. Instead, we're locked down and the, the only thing we're focusing on is just what the economic depression, but there's also the depression that others are, are, are suffering from. And I really, really feel bad, but my message is of hope. Yeah. I would just love every woman who is going through a hard time right now because they cannot easily walk out of their house and go to, to, to a person who at least applies as a source of strength to just hold on a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. I know that this too shall pass. And also to, I like one of the things, because I've, I've been in a depressed mode before, one of, the, one of the things that I really learned how to do sincerely from, from the bottom of my heart is to pray. You can, you can say a prayer for yourself because if, if people are really far from you, God is not. Yeah. So you can, you can say a prayer for yourself and, and be strong for yourself in this time because nobody else will be there. It's a really tough time and it's taking its toll on the rest of the world. So I'd want my women out there who are going through things that cannot easily be understood to just hold on a little bit more. Yeah. And very soon, Soon and very soon, all shall pass and, and, and we shall be together again. And we shall go back to the way know, life normally functions. Mm -hmm. And as for, for women in the rest of the world, depressed or not, yes. I wish to see a time where we're so unafraid. It's good to be courageous, but sometimes we will not be courageous. Or sometimes will be the flip side of courage, which is fearful and whatever it is. But can we start to bear our flaws unapologetically? We apologize so much. We apologize so much for the tiny mistakes. We apologize so much because we cannot hold it in together, because we cannot be perfect. But if we can get to a point where we are flawed, but we're still who we are, and we're flawed and we do not apologize. Even when we, we start to correct our paths, it's for us and not for other people. I would, I would love us to get to such a time. That would be true empowerment, would, inside out. Like that would be true empowerment. Yeah. I do agree. Thank you so much, Vanessa. <laughs> what next with Vanessa? Any more new poems that you have coming out? Where can we find you? I know many are excited. I got a lot of messages yesterday. People on social media accounts. Is she on IG? Is she on Facebook? What's next with Vanessa? Okay, so there, um, the blessing in disguise about the lockdown is that you get to to focus on yourself a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've been doing a lot of writing, and I hope by the time the world opens its doors to us, I will be able to give out so much but I, I i know there is like enough to share with everybody so i've been doing a lot of writing a lot of thinking and i just hope there's a a more what is that word <laughs> a more um th there's there's more to offer to, to to you guys like when all this is done and we, we start to to share uh, everything that we've been doing behind behind the closed doors. So there's a lot of work that I'm cooking, and what is next is just bigger and better things, and also realer issues. Because uh, there's been 
there's so much that is going on and I can't wait to table it, to share it. And also this COVID thing. So yeah. there's so much, there's so much to expect. And I am, I'm on IG, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, of course, and I'm on YouTube. And everywhere you will find me as Vanessa Chisakula, except my IG and my Twitter have one S in my name. Okay. It's not Vanessa with a double S. Yes, it's one S. And yeah, all my work is on YouTube, all my work is on Facebook, on IG, not much is there. But but I'm available, like I I'm available on all social media platforms and I respond like yes. when, when you say something to me. <laughs> yeah. You do. <laughs> we have heard it from Vanessa Chesakula. Thank you so much for being on Shauna K's motivational breeze when I reached out to you. You didn't hesitate to accept the invitation. It has been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure talking to you. I can do that to myself and also my listeners, they will be learning a lot from our talk that we just had on women empowerment. And I also want to say to all the women out there, keep your head up, stay focused, be purpose driven know what it is that you want and remember that you are equipped with everything that you can possibly think of to go out and conquer this world and let us all be less fearful and take up space take up space and do what we were rightfully made to do by god thank you so much vanessa and thank, thank you, you so much shauna tuning in to another episode of shauna k's motivational breeze it's a pleasure having you here today and of course vanessa will not leave us until she gives us another taste of that poem or something else that you want to share with us before you leave to take us out okay so <clears throat> let me do 15 seconds of something that i really love Her place was in a four-wall room called Kitchen. Broken dishes were the order of a day and she had mastered the various scents of a nail-breaking dishwashing liquids she used to scrub the dirt away. In this kitchen, she was just a chef, a master of recipes, a knowledgeable spice expert, a flow scrubber, a doctor of greasy areas, it was a full-time job. She could barely stay sober. They said, her specialty is cookery. Who said documentation leaves in the same room? But you see, her place was not at home. Battling cramps and nursing period flows or wiping blood off flows. Neither was her place at home. Practicing selective hearing or being the chief in administering first aid or passing a band aid to who needed it first, it was always a crusade. And her place was not at home to practice, to, to mother an adult whose parents could not teach real life lessons or basic mannerisms on how to coexist. This one they gave to her and they called him husband. Her biggest mistake was to fight for equality because women had already achieved an unbeatable level of superiority. You ask about her place? Her place is on top. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Vanessa. Thank you. So much.